I am talking about the organophosphorus toxicity affecting the sheep. So you might have seen the labels that are seen on the pesticide bottles, sashes, and the bags. So the bright red color what we are seeing, and the letter poison and the skull labeling what we are seeing. So our class of pesticide, the organophosphorus pesticide, belongs to this color depiction. That means the consumption of this pesticide is extremely toxic and pose serious health hazard to the animals. So if they consume. So like this, there will be color depiction to all the pesticide, red, yellow, blue, and green. So based on which the toxicity potential of pesticides can be determined by seeing the color uh, combination in the pesticide bottles. So the organophosphorus pesticide, it is one among the various group of pesticide what we use, and it is the most commonly employed class of pesticide. And the mode of entry of this pesticide into the animals is through the accidental ingestion or the majority of the time, so it might be due to the consumption of the freshly sprayed crops. So sometimes crops which are freshly sprayed with this organophosphorus pesticide, so consumption of such crops will lead to the organophosphorus toxicity. So directly going into the organophosphorus toxicity, structurally this organophosphorus compound, they are organic esters of the phosphorus. So as you see in the picture, so in the central part, you see the phosphorus atom surrounded by three side chain, R1, R2, and R3. And it has formed an ester linkage with the oxygen. And that bondage, we call it as oxon bondage. So through this side chain, this phosphorus compound will bind to its target, the target being the acetylcholine esterase enzyme. And this organophosphorus compound, it is broadly classified into directly acting organophosphorus compound and indirectly acting organophosphorus compound. See, directly acting the name itself suggests it need not need an activation. So it directly it will affect the target system. Whereas indirectly acting organophosphorus compound, as such, it is an inactive compound. It needs activation. Once it enters the body, it needs activation into an active moiety to affect the target organ. So directly acting organophosphorus compound examples are tetraethyl pyrophosphate, the commonly used monocrotophos, forate pesticide, which is very commonly used, then chlorpyrifos, DFP, trichlorophos, then dimethoate. So very commonly, this organophosphorus insecticide, it ends with a suffix phos or pos. So by, know, by knowing this phos in the suffix or in the prefix, we can determine this class of pesticide belongs to the organophosphorate group. Whereas in the indirectly acting organophosphorus compound, as I already told, it needs activation once it enters the body. So likewise in malathion, once it enters the body, it has to get converted into maloxone if it has to affect the body. Then parathion, it also will get converted into paroxone, then phenthion to phenoxone. So these are some of the examples of organophosphorus pesticides which are very commonly used in forum practice. Metacid, which contain methyl parathion, polydol, tiger, and forate. In our region, in Karnataka, very commonly used organophosphorus insecticide, the forate. The mechanism of toxicity, how exactly this organophosphorus compound affects the animals. See, this organophosphorus compound, it inhibits the acetylcholine esterase enzyme initially reversibly, then later on irreversibly. So as a result of which, there will be accumulation of acetylcholine, which will act on the muscarinic receptor and nicotinic receptor and causes over exaggeration of muscarinic and nicotinic sign. So before moving on and before knowing exactly what this inhibition means, we should know the normal physiology of the acetylcholine. See, if you see here the normal physiology of the acetylcholine, see acetylcholine, it will release from the presynaptic nerve terminal, enters the synapse, and in the synapse, it's going to act on the muscarinic receptor and the nicotinic receptor to perform its normal duty. So what it's, the, what it's been assigned, so that duty will be performed by the acetylcholine. See, after doing its duty, it will come back into the synapse and it has to be metabolized. So how it's going to metabolize? It will bind with the acetylcholine esterase enzyme. It will be waiting at the synapse to cleave the acetylcholine. See, acetylcholine, once it binds to acetylcholine esterase, so how it's going to bind? In the acetylcholine esterase, we get two binding sites. One is esteretic site and anionic site. So this acetylcholine, it binds both to anionic and the esteretic site and that get cleaved into the acetic acid and the choline. This is a normal physiology of the acetylcholine. See what happens here. So once there is toxicity of organophosphorus pesticide, this organophosphorus pesticide, it will get attracted to the esteretic site. It will occupy the esteretic site. And through the serine amino acid that is present in the acetylcholine esterase enzyme, it forms a weak bondage initially. 
that is it forms phosphorylation and forms a weak bondage initially so because of occupation of organophosphorus compound in one of the site of acetylcholinesterase enzyme acetylcholine cannot bind to the acetylcholinesterase enzyme so there will be accumulation of acetylcholine so what is accumulated acetylcholine will do it again go and bind to the vacant muscarinic and nicotinic receptor but this time with a over exaggeration so it is going to produce a over exaggerated response so that is the mechanism of toxicity of this organophosphorus compound and as the time progress i told initially there will be reversible inhibition of acetylcholinesterase enzyme as the time progresses one of the methyl group present in the organophosphorus compound will be lost and that process we call it as aging as and when the alkyl group is lost the bondage the initially the weak bondage that exists between the enzyme and the organophosphorus compound it will become strong so once the bondage becomes strong once the aging process sets in there will be irreversible inhibition of acetylcholinesterase enzyme so if there is irreversible inhibition of the enzyme then a fresh enzyme has to be synthesized for the metabolism of acetylcholine so that's a fatal uh, mechanism of this organophosphorus compound so this is depicted in nutshell so initially if you see a acetylcholine released from the presynaptic nerve terminal it binds with the receptor and perform its duty it produces the postsynaptic potential then after doing its duty it will again go back to the synapse so the star marked acetylcholine esterase enzyme will be waiting in the synapse it will cleave the acetylcholine this is normal thing if there is toxicity of organophosphorus pesticide see what will happen this organophosphorus pesticide it will inhibit the star shaped acetylcholine esterase enzyme as a result the accumulated acetylcholine nowhere to go it again binds to the muscarinic receptor and nicotinic receptor which strong attraction and forms a exaggeration of signal see here it is an exaggeration of signal that is produced after binding of acetylcholine with the receptors so here the clinical signs what are the clinical signs so the clinical signs are expected from the over exaggeration of the binding of acetylcholine with both the muscarinic receptor and the nicotinic receptor the predominant one is with bondage with the muscarinic receptor so similarly we will see the cholinergic signs first so the cholinergic signs being it is depicted in the mnemonic sludger dumbbells as we already knew there will be excessive salivation there will be lacrimation there will be urinary incontinence there will be diarrhea there will be colic there will be msis there will be muscle weakness why there will be muscle weakness because of stimulation of the nicotinic receptor see by stimulation of nicotinic receptor it should increase the tonicity of the muscle why there is muscle weakness because there is a continuous stimulation of the nicotinic receptor when there is continuous stimulation of the nicotinic receptor it will cause persistent depolarization once there is persistent depolarization the muscle tends to get weakened and it will cause muscle weakness so along with that there will be myosis pinpoint pupil will be there there will be bradycardia decrease in the heart rate bronchorrhea there will be excessive bronchial secretion sometimes what will happen this secretion will go into the lungs and causes aspiratory pneumonia as it by itself then bronchospasm it will decrease the bronchial airway then the ms is lacrimation and excessive salivation so these are the classical clinical signs in the op toxicity so this is a the salivation and the diarrhea what we have seen and along with the uh, muscarinic sign we also see nicotinic sign because acetylcholine is also binding with the nicotinic receptor so after setting of this muscarinic sign we also see ataxia tremor then there will be hypertonicity and eventually the death of the animal so if there is severe toxicity this severe toxicity may result in the acute respiratory failure see the death is mainly attributed to the respiratory arrest why there will be respiratory failure i already told there will be muscle weakness once there is continuous stimulation of the nicotinic receptor once there is persistent depolarization the muscle gets weakened and there will be paralysis of the diaphragm and the intercostal muscle leading to the respiratory arrest and eventually the death of the animal and these are the pm findings so post mortem findings see we have seen number of uh, case reports uh, related to this organophosphorus compound so one consistent post mortem finding what we observe is the congestion and the petechial hemorrhage in the urinary bladder so this is a consistent finding in all the sheep that were died due to this organophosphorus toxicity so this is a consistent finding what we are seeing so apart from that in the urinary bladder in the liver congestion of the liver will be there the paleness of the liver will be there and in the brain there will be congestion generalized congestion and at parts there is hemorrhage at the sulci of the cerebral cortex and in the kidney the degeneration of the cortical areas and how to diagnose this organophosphorus toxicity so there are some nominal features to diagnose general toxicity whatever the toxicity so those things we will add 
So along with that, we have to collect the history. See, history and circumstantial evidence plays a very important role when diagnosing organic phosphorus toxicity. We have seen many number of this organic phosphorus toxicity. To quote one example, so there were 50 sheep deaths in one farm. So in our the village in the Karnataka. So there, the history of farmer, what he told is, after harvesting the paddy and ragi, what the farmers will do here is, so they will farm a heap of paddy and this ragi straw to supply as a feed to the sheep and goats in the summer season. So before doing this heap, so they will spray the forehead, forehead uh, pesticide on the ground and above that, the paddy straw and ragi straw heap will be made. So this thing he has done five months back. So as the time progresses, so he started feeding this straw to the sheep and goats. So eventually when the bottom layer comes, when the bottom layer of this uh, paddy straw and ragi straw came, so he forgotten that he has sprayed the forage insecticide and he fed the same uh, forage to the sheep and goat and in 200 flock of sheep, so more than 50 sheep were died. So when we investigated the place, when we look around the place, we found the forage sachet that was fallen there. So when we asked the farmer about that sachet, he told it has been sprayed four to five months back. But what we knew from that thing is, based on his history and also the evidence what we see surrounding the area, so we could we could found out that that toxicity might be due to the organophosphorus toxicity. So history and circumstantial evidence plays very crucial role in diagnosing any form of toxicity, in particular this organophosphorus toxicity. See, apart from history and circumstantial evidence, there are classical clinical signs. I told you muscarinic signs and the nicotinic signs. So those are all classical for this organophosphorus toxicity. And PM finding. I told you one PM finding which is very consistent in all the organophosphorus toxicity that we are seeing in the sheep and goat. So we used to see congestion and the petechial hemorrhage in the urinary bladder. And through advanced technique, you can confirm the presence of organophosphorus toxic through chromatographic technique and enzyme assay. You can measure the acetylcholinesterase enzyme activity also. So those are advanced technique. Then the final is response to treatment. How the animal responds to the specific treatment. What is the specific treatment? If you administer nitropin sulfate and two pralidoxime, how the animal will respond? If the animal responds favorably, definitely we can zero in on so that this toxicity is definitely due to organophosphorus toxicity. See, sometimes we have seen this drugs, this drug combination, it worked as a magical drug to retrieve back the affected animal. So response to treatment is also one of the diagnostic feature for this organophosphorus toxicity. Then the treatment, the specific treatment for organophosphorus toxicity is the administration of atropin sulfate followed by the enzyme reactivator, cholinesterase enzyme reactivator, which we call it as oxime group. So among the oxime group, the important drug being the two pralidoxime. So what is the rationale behind using atropin sulfate and the oxymes? So this atropin sulfate, as you know, it's a competitive antagonist of acetylcholine, specifically on the muscarinic receptor. It is going to block the muscarinic receptor so that acetylcholine will not come and bind to the muscarinic receptor. The muscarinic signs, what we see, sledge and dumbbells, will be avoided if you use atropin sulfate. Followed by oxymes, what this oxime will do? Oxime will reactivate the enzyme. So how exactly it's going to reactivate the enzyme? If you see here, so I told you arginophosphorus compound, it's going to bind to the esteritic site. So this anionic site will be vacant. So once you administer two pump, so this two palm will occupy the anionic site. See here, it will occupy the anionic site and it will form phosphorylation with the organophosphorus compound. Once it undergoes phosphorylation with the organophosphorus compound, the another bondage, what has happened with the enzyme, it will be broken down. So once it is broken down, this enzyme complex will be relieved back. And this mechanism, it will work well when you administer two pump initially. So when, when there is initial reversible inhibition of acetylcholine esterase enzyme, you can use this two pump and it will work very well. So once the time progresses, once aging process sets in, if you use two pump, it cannot retrieve back the organophosphorus compound. So it is null and white. So you cannot retrieve once there is irreversible inhibition of the enzyme. So this is the rationale behind using two pump. So first we should use atropine sulfate followed by the oxime reactivator. What is the dosage and what is the frequency of usage of this drug? See, that is also important. See, atropine sulfate, normally, see, if you are using atropine sulfate just to mitigate the salivation, its dosage will be 0.02 to 0.05. That's a normal dosage of atropine sulfate. Whereas in the toxicity of organophosphorus compound, so we have to use it in higher dosage. So note down the dosage, it is 0.2 to 0.5 milligram per kg body weight. 
through intravenous route. So what is the frequency of administration? So we have to use it as a loading dose initially. You give it through intravenous bolus route initially, then wait for the response. So what is the response you should look out for? Whether you should look out for the pupillary dilation? No, it's not the right indication. See, pupillary dilation, it will happen slowly. So first we should note down the heart rate and the blood pressure. So you have to monitor the blood pressure and the heart rate. Once it goes beyond 80 millimeter of mercury or more than 80 beats per minute of heart rate. So then you will think that the animal has undergone atropinization. That means the animal become stabilized. So until that time, you have to push the atropin through the bolus, intravenous bolus only. Once the animal gets stabilized, you can give 20% of the total dosage what we have calculated as intravenous infusion using normal saline. So with the normal saline, you can administer atropin intravenous infusion route. Then two pump, the same thing, the same frequency will follow here also. So initially you have to give 10 milligram per kg body weight, intravenous route through intravenous bolus only. Once animal gets stabilized, so every four to six interval, you can give it through infusion. The same thing, 20% of the calculated dosage through NS, you have to, can give it through intravenous infusion. See, apart from specific treatment, you can also go for supportive treatment like parental fluids and sedatives. So one question, uh, generally, the colleagues, what they ask is, can we give atropin sulfate alone to treat OP toxicity or can we give two palm alone? So why we have to give combination atropin sulfate, whether it is suffice? See, if you give only atropin sulfate, what is its mechanism of action? It is going to block muscarinic receptor competitively, leaving behind nicotinic receptor vacant. So the entire acetylcholine, it will not bind to the muscarinic receptor, but it will go and bind to the nicotinic receptor. The nicotinic signs will be very much there. So you will see the ataxia, the more aggressive ataxia, in coordination will be there, muscle weakness will be there, the animal death will be more faster if you give only atropin sulfate. I have seen many deaths after using only atropin sulfate without the combined usage of two pump. But what happens if you use only two pump without usage of atropin sulfate? See, two pump, the mechanism you know, two pump will bind to the anionic site, then retrieve back the enzyme. So it is also blocking the binding of acetylcholine with the enzyme because it is binding to the anionic site. So it will also aggravate the condition. Best combination to use to treat the organophosphorus toxicity is you have to use the combination of atropin sulfate along with two pump. That we should be very careful. And the case report, what I have told you, the case what we have seen, that the classical case, we have made an article out of it. So where more than 50 deaths were there, 50 sheep deaths were there. And I have a video about this. You just watch this video. It is in the later stage of the organophosphorus toxicity. If you see here, after the cholinergic sign sets in, there will be ataxia, incoordination, muscle weakness. See, once this nicotinic sign sets in, the animal will definitely die and it is very difficult to retrieve back that such animal. And these are the post-mortem what we have done on the dead ship. So thanks for watching. Thank you.